I love Peter Schiff, 99% of everything he says, right? But obviously we know he's wrong about Bitcoin. Either this guy is the best marketer in the world and he just wants to be the villain of Bitcoin or he's just an idiot. He's done a big disservice to a lot of people, whether he's doing it on purpose or not. Take a Bitcoin class, go to Bitcoin University. There is just nobody that ever said, oh, I wish I would have bought less Bitcoin. Again, you can see the evolution of money. You got the seashells, you got the salt, you got the precious metals here. Then you have the cash, then you have the credit cards and the final one. The final boss with the B is Bitcoin. There's a really big deflationary force that's driving down prices. Without that deflationary force, we would have already an inflation of like 50, 60 percent, probably higher than that. Another lie they told us is that our pensions are going to be there. Our Social Security is going to be there. And a lot of these companies are not going to give you a pension. A lot of the governments, a lot of people are saying Social Security is going to run out in the 2030s. For me, the US dollar is like the mother of all fiat shit coins. They were cooking us slow in a pot of water like frogs. We want to be the leader of the world, we got to buy some more Bitcoin. The first country to print money to buy Bitcoin wins. You're doing Satoshi Saturday and you're doing now really a lot of videos and I love, uh, love that. And our video, actually our interview comes together because one of, one of my subscribers uh, commented on my video, hey, you have to bring on Cherry uh, loves freedom on, on your show and I'm like, ah, let's, let's see who he is. I'm like, ah, perfect. I love it. I saw one video and I was like, uh, reaching out to you. Uh, what, what, what did inspire you to like get started with content creation, get started with speaking your mind on the internet and with Satoshi Saturday? Well, first of all, thank you to him for doing that, to reaching out for you. I really appreciate that. And also thank you for looking at the videos and, um, reaching out to me and doing this for me. But what's inspired me is um, I used to do precious metal videos and I kind of threw precious metals because I wanted to share my experience with uh, <laughs> the broken money and everything else. What I learned in 2020, I started September 2020. I just wanted to tell everybody and, and show my love of precious metals, uh, the broken money that we're in and also the lies that we've been told because I used to tell people, uh, you know, in person and stuff like that. But I figured if I get on the internet, it would be a, a little bit better to do that more efficient. And so I started doing that. And then during my research of broken money and everything else and more about precious metals, I started learning about cryptocurrency, right? <laughs> we always start with cryptocurrency. And then um, I started to notice that there's a little difference between Bitcoin and crypto in the beginning. And then I started to know there was a lot bigger difference between Bitcoin and crypto. And then after two months of having a little bit of crypto, I sold it all, put it all into Bitcoin. And then my videos started transitioning into gold, silver, platinum to, oh, do a little bit of crypto and gold and silver, platinum. Then, oh, maybe you should get some Bitcoin and gold and silver, platinum. And then more Bitcoin, less precious metals, more Bitcoin, less precious metals. And then I sold everything into uh, Bitcoin, all my precious metals, uh, the black hole of Bitcoin got me and I sucked in and, uh, I just kept making my videos and now it's all Bitcoin and now Satoshi's in Bitcoin. I, I love it so much. And it is the transition that a lot of people undergo. I also was in stocks before and kind of mm -hmm. shifted to like 50%, uh, stocks, 50% Bitcoin. And now I'm like all in a little bit over all in even, um, but like, when you make videos, um, you put in a work, you put in your energy, your, your time in it. Uh, what is your main goal with it? Do you want to educate people? Uh, do you want, want to make it a, a full-time thing or is it already a full-time thing for you? When I first started, it was just a continuation of what I was doing with precious metals. And no, it's not a full-time thing. It's just a, a part-time thing for me. Um, but my, my main goal is... I'm not a YouTuber, to be to be completely honest with you. You know, I I saw your video of your whole setup and stuff, and that's not me. I just have a phone, and even us, you know how we started off. It started off a little rocky with us, right? <laughs> As you can see, I'm not technically, uh, you know, the most soundest guy in the world. So I just I just pick up a phone, Robin, honestly, and I just hold it up and I talk to people, and then I upload it to my either through my um, editor on my MacBook sometimes especially for Satoshi Saturday, I put a little funny edits in, or if I'm busy throughout my, throughout my day, I just record and then upload. So I'm not reaching a lot of people right now, but the main reason I do it is so I can reach some more people, uh, friends, family, 
Uh, somebody just happens, if YouTube happens to, uh, you know, reach out and put my video out there because, uh, you know, we're, we're a niche, we're a niche little thing, Bitcoin. Point, I think it's like 0.5% of the population, I believe. That's what I've heard. What what have you heard, by the way? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's 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 it really depends on what metrics you you're looking at, because if you look at like how many people own Bitcoin in some sort of like you can make an argument, everyone that holds the S&P 500 owns a little bit of Bitcoin because Tesla holds a little bit of Bitcoin. So if you count that, a lot of people have Bitcoin. But if you actually count who actually understands Bitcoin and holds them and holds a significant amount in Bitcoin, like over 20% of the uh, total net worth, then the number gets really small. Like we're really early on. Like even if a lot of people have like ah, a little bit of Bitcoin and there are different numbers in, in Swiss, it's like 8%. In America, it's maybe a little bit more. Then Nigeria, we had like 10, 20%. Then other parts of the world, we're more to closer to 1%. So it's, it depends really on, on what metrics you're using and on, on what kind of thing you are looking at. But in the end, I mean, there are like uh, 200 million addresses uh, or 150 million addresses above a certain threshold of, of Bitcoins. But then one person can have multiple addresses. On one address, there could be like a Coinbase where like millions of people are on one address. So there are a lot of debates on that, uh, and it's it's really hard to pick an adoption. <laughs> what what metrics is the the, the adoption uh, thing? I just like to look at uh, Google Trends also, uh, and and more social things like what what are the biggest Bitcoin influencers? How many followers do they have? What are the current views on that? Uh, and uh, I mean, but maybe that's just because I'm coming from that area and I'm doing a lot of videos videos and researching that department. It would be interesting, for example, to know how many hardware wallets has been sold. That would be an interesting uh, statistic that I would like to know, but we don't know because the hardware companies don't give them out. Uh, so yeah, we can we can just guess. Yeah, and it's hard too because people have multiple, you know, wallets and stuff like that. But back to your question, your original question. The, the reason I do it is because um, part two parts. I, I like to document my life. Because I, I really feel like, Robin, that um, when we look back at these times, you know, the people back in the early days, the early days of 2010, 11, 12 or whatever, you know, they got it at the crazy low prices. But I believe that the gap between them and us is going to be minuscule uh, compared to between the gap between us and people from 15, 20 years from now. I, I believe that. So I want to be able to show Wouldn't it be cool to watch a video of your great grandfather or something you know, back in the days talking and being a real life, because I believe that we're on a timeline that uh, it's just unbelievable, the prices that we're going to be getting and being an early adopter. And um, when Bitcoin is in the, you know, it's, it's, of course, we measure it by dollars and stuff. I don't like to do it, but we have to do it because that's the measurement stick. But it's going to be in the millions. I mean, it's, it's going to be in the millions before, obviously, before it gets to global adoption and satoshis are the you know the standard of uh transacting with um it's going to be cool to, to that's why in every satoshi saturday video i do we'll get to that i guess in a minute i always talk about what the price is today the block height and how many satoshis you can get for one dollar and i want my great grandkids to look back and say you got 1400 satoshis for one dollar i mean people are not going to be able to get that in in a month or two months or whatever it is. So I do it for that, for documentation for my family and just for myself and all that stuff. And I also do it uh, for the little, small, little reach that I can do and just try to do my part to help uh, on the internet to orange pill as many people as I can. Yeah. Your grandkids will ask, what is a dollar? <laughs> yeah. Why did you accept the government money? Like why, why, why is that, why is that a thing? But maybe not, I don't know. Uh, how, how fast are we with the adoption? It's really interesting. Yeah? Um, may, maybe uh, with, 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 with that, what you're doing in the, with the block height, that's like a time chain thing. I, I love that topic uh, when we get into the Bitcoin time chain thing uh, and, and also the price that you're mentioning that because it is important because most people still to this day measure everything in euros, in dollars, in the fiat currencies. So... I think we as Bitcoiners, as we also want to get away from this fiat world, but we have to adopt to the masses 
and uh, tell them also, okay, this is the potential for Bitcoin and put it in a context so they understand it. I don't like to talk about dollars and, and euros uh, because I know the system is, is rigged and is, is bad for us. Um, but it's the reality of, of most people. And if we don't get to them where they are, then we lose them anyway. So, uh, and, it, and, and it's still the best marketing tool. I feel like, the, of course, there are other freedom marketing tools. For example, with Canadian trackers is always a great example where a lot of people came in because, oh, the government can just freeze my money. Uh, is the money that cannot be frozen? Yes, there is Bitcoin. That's a marketing tool. But the biggest marketing tool is with, when the Bitcoin price all of a sudden in the, I don't know, in July shoots up to 150,000. Then everybody's talking about it and a lot of more people will come into the scene. Uh, that's still the best marketing tool and will be interesting how it shakes out. But let's, let's get to the, like the underlying thing of, of that all. And you have coming from precious metal and now you're, you're in Bitcoin. And the one thing that people like gold people like Peter Schiff and, and also Bitcoiners like we are having in common, we kind of agree on the problem. Like we kind of agree, like what's wrong with, with, with our monetary system. So you probably got what's wrong with our system before Bitcoin because you were in precious metal. Uh, what, what did you, what, what's, what's your main thing? What uh, you thought is unfair or not good with our system? Good question. Well, first of all, before I answer that, I want to say this too. I forgot one part. Another reason I make the videos because I had a little bit of a following for precious metal stackers, and I kind of want to be a, a a kind of a bridge between Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrency nonsense with them because a lot of my uh, precious metal stackers that I that I even the guys I look up to still you know and the people a lot of them that follow me. Um, you know, they're they're very skeptical about Bitcoin because they think it's a cryptocurrency. And I have actually transitioned uh, quite a few people from precious metals, not like all the way, like to me, like what, you know, with us, with Bitcoin maxis, I have done a few of them, but that's an another reason why I'm making these videos so that I can um, get precious metal stackers to understand that, hey, I, I had a bunch of this precious metals. And and again, it's, it's great. It's way better than fiat currency, precious metals. It's hard money, um, but it's not finite, scarce money finality of uh you know scarcity like like bitcoin so i try to get them over that's another thing but as far as not, what was the question again sorry uh it just made the comparison like oh we, you were in in precious metal you were on bitcoin and what's the underlying thing is the monetary system is broken uh so i was like curious what was your first touch point with like, like i think like people when they get into bitcoin or precious metal they're like unsatisfied with some part of the system uh, and what is the main thing that uh, was disturbing you with the financial system? And then you probably got into a rabbit hole and then you got into like, what's the current system and stuff like that. But like, what was the first thing that you were like, oh, that's, 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 that should not be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, my background is finance. I went to school for finance. And so I was the guy in my, uh, in my thirties, I was reading about money and I wanted to be rich and this, that, and the third. I remember Robert Kiyosaki said this in a book, I think, or a seminar or something. I loved, I used to love Robert Kiyosaki, still do. He said, if you want to be rich, you have to study money, right? Just like if you want to be a cook, you have to study food. If you want to be a lawyer, you have to study law. So I went to finance school. And a lot of that stuff, I wanted to be a personal financial advisor to people. And on the side, I wanted to, you know, uh, invest in different you know, entrepreneurial things and real estate and, you know, different businesses and stuff like that. You remember the EBSI four quadrants of, uh, you know, the cash flow quadrants and everything else. I learned all about that. But one thing that really bothered me about uh, being a personal financial advisor, I didn't like the way the system was uh, was built because I was reading. I was learning about the traditional finance through school, but I was reading entrepreneurial stuff and Robert Kiyosaki. And I'm like, this stuff is not adding up to what I'm learning in this book from this book, right? Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or this, that, and third. And then I had a real life situation happen to me where I had some cash in the bank and I wanted to buy a car, right? And the person wanted, you know, we wanted cash, you know, so I wanted to get the cash out of the bank and the bank wouldn't let me take the money out. And they would ask me all these questions. I had to fill all this stuff. And I'm just like, this is my money. Why do I have to 
I mean, they were literally grilling me like I was a terrorist or something, or I was something, you know, bad. And I'm like, this is, and I, and I really thought about it. I was in there for half an hour talking about my money, getting my money out. And that was the first bell that went off. And this happened in 2019. It was kind of later. And then in 2020, of course, when we all had to stay home and sit down for a couple of months, that's when I started getting into precious metals. And that's when I really learned what inflation really was. I kind of knew what it was and I was right there with it. But that just brought me over when I knew that um, inflation came from one place and that was Washington, D.C. and here in America. And for them to print money that we work for and they can just press a button and they can just dilute it and debase it. Um, that right there, that's when I knew the money was broken. And that uh, just brought me down a, um, a rabbit hole that I just haven't been out of. Like, I just couldn't believe that all these years I was fooled to not only think that, hey, I was working hard and I, I wanted to be rich. But the only reason I wanted to be rich is because in 1971, August 15th, 1971, when Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard. And by the way, Richard Nixon is not a bad guy. He gets a lot of, uh, you know bad rep for that, but he was a really good president, but that's not for this video. But um, when that happened, uh, it's like, wow, you know, WTF happened in 1971. Then all everybody started think going from thinking about, oh, how life is good and blah, blah, blah. Now everybody's thinking about money and how I make more of it. And that's when all the rich, getting rich stuff came out. And I'm just like, that's, that's why I think that way, because they were cooking a slow in a, in a, in a pot of water like frogs, right? They were boiling us slowly, but then in 2020, they turned the heat up. So when I found that out, I just been on a mission ever since to uh, not only learn more, but to wake as many people up as I can uh, for the lies from the lies. Yeah, and it's like that frog example is really interesting because um, it, it's it's widely known that uh, the, the frog example, he doesn't get it, but what I found and I made some, some research on, on that, maybe I'm wrong, but what I found is the frog actually jumps out at one point. Like when you boil a frog, he actually tries to jump out at some point when it gets too hot. And I think, um, people with the monetary system are also not that stupid. The pain is just not big enough. Now the, the, it, it sounds weird because we printed so much money. But because we are really good in, and efficient in producing stuff, we're getting really good in computer stuff uh, and, and we're getting really good with AI and that stuff. Like there's a really big deflationary force that's driving down prices. With, without that deflationary force, we, we would have already an inflation of like 50, 60 percent, probably higher than that. Um, and that's why the pain is not high enough and, and the system still is running. But I think if we keep on printing money, at some point, the pain will be high enough. All the frogs, not only us, will jump out of the water and, and we will we will get it at, at some point. I hope so. I, fe I feel like that. Uh, I see the, the, even now, like inflation uh, is a topic. I, uh, I see the, right now the EU election, uh, American elections, Austrian election, all of that stuff is right now this year ongoing. Uh, and I only watch it for one specific reason. I want to know what topics they're talking about. I really don't care what politicians are saying what. <laughs> I, I don't want to get into this, but, but I'm interested in what topics are they talking about. Of course, in the European Union, Ukraine war is a big thing, uh, but also inflation and things are getting more expensive is actually a topic. They're not talking about the solution. They're not talking about Bitcoin, but inflation is a topic. And that's, that's interesting to, us, to me. Um, but you also talked about like they fooled us, uh, the lies that they were telling us. Um, is, is there something that, uh, like, who do you mean when, when you say, like, uh, they're lying to us, they, they're fooling us? Is, is that like the mainstream media, uh, central banks? Like, uh, what are you addressing there? All the above. They all lied to us. I mean, every, every I mean, think about this, right? You know, I'm, I'm American. I don't I don't know how you guys grew up, but but, you know, we relied. And, and this is a spoiler alert for all the kids. Um, got lied about Santa Claus. We got lied about the tooth fairy, <laughs> the Easter, the Easter bunny, right? All, all, I mean, even as a kid, the, all these things, you know, are lies. And then when we grow up in school, what do they tell us? They tell us, uh, you got to get good grades, right? All the way from elementary school to middle school to high school. They say good, good grades, 
so you can get into a good college. And then when you get in a good college, you'll get a good, safe, secure job, right? But now that's not that's not what it is. That the world is changing. You just brought up that thing with the technology. I'm 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 reading I'm almost done with Jeff Booth's book. Um, you know the one I'm talking about. Uh, I got it on my phone. The, the process uh, tomorrow. Yes. Oh my God, that's such a good book. And he and he's telling us he's like, look, man. Uh, you know, and I always talk about being adaptable and stuff like that. We have to adapt to the future because the future is on its way. And with these uh, AIs coming out, they're just getting exponentially. And this book was written in 2019, I believe, because he keeps saying 2019 in the book. And this is even before the pandemic started. So this was five years earlier. And when he's talking about these things, I'm just like, wow, all the things that we grew up thinking, because my grandparents, they worked at, you know, they worked at factories and they worked somewhere for 40, 50 years. And then they retired and they got their pension. Another lie they told us is that, you know, uh, our pensions are going to be there. Our social security is going to be there. And a lot of these companies are not going to give you a pension. A lot of the governments, a lot of people are saying social security is going to run out in the 2030s somewhere um, in, in the United States. So it's like, what, what do you, what are you going to look forward to? You can't stay at a job more than 10 plus years now, right? The whole system that we grew up with our parents and our grandparents, you know, the American dream about buying a house. I mean, you're a young guy, man. It's like people your age, I mean, they can't buy a house right now, you know, and they were lied to because nobody has any idea what the what the reason, the underlying reason is. And it's inflation mm -hmm. and nobody tells us about it. So the whole thing to me and the whole system is, is just a big lie. Is it do you think it's um, purposely lying or is it just an old system that cannot keep up with uh, the, the actual world? Uh, I, I sometimes also think like the central banks. Um, when you see the history, there were maybe some people that were malicious with it, uh, and but there are a lot of people that just working at the central bank and working there, and they truly believe that BS that they are telling, uh, and and they are really like I know clever people that have no interest in the central bank, uh, and they really believe in inflation is good because they don't know better. They are not malicious. They, they just, they're just uh, uh, ignorant to, to the truth and doing re deep research. Um, and this is something that I'm like, I think the system just grew uh, and is, is really bad for us, but there's no really like a, a person behind that has all the, like puts all the strings and maybe is like the, the one malicious guy or, I think the system just grew in a really bad way and we have to get rid of that toxic system now. Yes. I believe it's a combination of both. They're lying to us on purpose and it's also the system is old. Um, people are uh, blissfully ignorant because there's so many distractions here and I know they're not uh, on accident. You know, I have, I know people in their forties that still play video games nights and weekends after after work again there's nothing wrong with playing video games but you know they watch stupid you know i know people that watch stupid tv shows they'll be on instagram they'll be on tiktok and i believe that they do things in short bursts with these social medias that you're always scrolling and they don't want you to watch long form things they want you to always constantly be bombarded with a short attention span things number one and then if you are watching a tv show they'll put little commercials in there that they want you to watch so I think that in itself is is a is part of the lie and also the old system that we we're in. They're just not going to come out and tell you, hey, that system is broken. It's not good. The new system is here, because if you start if they start telling you that, then they got to start telling you about the lies as well. And they don't want to do that. So I think the whole thing, in my personal opinion, is a scam. I don't want to get too far down the uh, <laughs> the rabbit hole of uh, my my theories on that. But um being being my age, I'm in my late 40s, seeing the things that I've seen in my life and growing up with uh, the silent generation. I grew up with my, my uh, grandparents and growing up with baby boomers. I'm a uh, Generation X myself. Um, I see uh, the changes that are happening in this country or in the world, excuse me. And it's just uh, it's not good, man. It's not good. And there's so many lies in, in the old system again. Um, and these people need to wake up. You know, and it's hard. I, I heard a quote from Dick Gregory the other day. It says, uh, he says, when the universe gives you goggles to see everything, it's two rules to this. 
He said, the first rule is, he said, the first rule is once you see what you see, you cannot unsee it. You will always see these things. And the second rule is you can't make people see what you see. And that's the hard part because us as Bitcoiners, we're just like, how do you not see this? How do you not see this? So that right there is the hardest part, because like you said, oh, 2 percent inflation is good. Right. You want to say something <laughs> Look like you want to say something? Yeah, it, it's it's definitely like that. Uh, when when you have like uh, uh, so many people are saying like, oh, the inflation is good. No, no, Bitcoin that's for criminals. No, Bitcoin that's for speculate for speculators. Oh no, Bitcoin is just for rich people. Like I heard so many crazy uh, story about that, and, and it's 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 fascinating for me that they they don't get it because we you all have to when you get bitcoin you have to like oh shit tomorrow everyone gets it and i have to really buy everything now because soon everyone gets it and then the price shoots up to 50 million no that it takes time like and it's like there's a process um even though we have not internet and information is getting distributed really fast now but the information has to come to a brain that's still the same as 50 years ago, 100 years ago, the, the human brain did not get an update on an information thing, maybe even like a downgrade. Uh, we could we could argue because so many AI tools and so many uh, internet things take so much of our um, heavy lifting already down. So like uh, I, I use AI, I think probably like 20, 30 times on a day because I do so much stuff with AI. It's, 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 it's fascinating for me. One year ago, I did not use any AI purposely. Like I'm talking about interfaces like ChatGPT or other softwares that I directly use. Of course, one year ago, I probably used AI with when I used YouTube because there's an algorithm behind that who serves content. I'm not talking about this, but now I'm, I'm using it so much. So the point here is um, people need to understand Bitcoin and it takes time. And that's why I take the long approach. I will do this podcast till I die because I think till I die, I have to educate people on something. I will, I will not like in my lifespan, I'm now 25. If I live to hundred years old, I will do this the ne next 75 years. You're a young man, man. <laughs> And I, and I commend you for that, seriously, uh, to do it every every day for the rest of your life. Because you do it seven days a week. We talked about that. I make videos seven days a week, too. But you're right. It does take time. I, I This is what I talk about on my channel. I don't tell anybody to buy Bitcoin or buy Bitcoin or Satoshis. It's all about your education, right? I don't want anybody just to buy it because, like you said, most people are going to buy it because the, the price is going up, you know, the fiat. Dollars, so they want to make money and want to get rich. That's anytime I talk to people about Bitcoin and Satoshi's, that's the first thing they say. Well, I can't afford it. How much is it? How much money did you make? I, I did. I went to the eye doctor yesterday. I made a video outside the eye doctor too. And when they were checking me out, she, I had to ask me about Bitcoin shirt on. Right, I wear that stuff all the time. And she goes, "This is the first thing she says." She says, "Did you sell this time?" I said, "When she said that, I'm just like sell this time." What did she sell? She's talking about when it went up to 70 something. Did I sell this time? Like the last time it went to 69. And I'm like, no, I did not sell this time. I said, did you? Because I want to see where her head is at. She's like, no, no, I got some from me and my kids. And of course, us as Bitcoiners, we want to say, do you have it on a cold storage? Do you got to, you know, <laughs> because, <laughs> because we know that they have it on an exchange. Obviously, they don't own it when they do that. But they talk about the fiat price, right? And she says, yeah, I got some for me and my kids and everything. And I tell people, I go, look, you know, on my channel and in person, when I sit down with them, I say, look, don't worry about the price. Just buy some here and there. But the most important thing is before you buy, you have to educate yourself. You know, and I tell them a list of things to learn about, you know, what is a Satoshi? Uh, what is the difficulty adjustment or what is the block height? Or just a couple of things like that, because once they have a little bit, because I always zap them a little bit of some Satoshis, maybe a thousand Satoshis, hundred, five hundred, whatever. And then once they got some skin in the game, you know, and I said, listen, don't worry about the fiat price. Just learn about that. And I always tell them, look at a Satoshi like a dollar. That's what I tell people. And they go, what? What are you talking about? And I have to talk about that on my, um, my, my Satoshi Saturday si series. You know, look at Satoshis like dollars. And again, we'll probably get into that in a minute. But um, the main thing is you have to study 
But they, and again, it's hard to do that because what we, like we said before, they want to keep you going like this, scrolling on your phone. They want you playing video games. They want you being on all these different social media things. And they don't want you to sit down and watch a 30 minute video and actually learn something. They only want to teach you specific things about the fiat school that they want you in or the college or whatever, or whatever course. But I said, listen, never work harder at a job or at school than you do on yourself. That's what I think Jim Rohn says. I had the school part, but if you're going to work that hard and take all these notes for your boss and take all these notes at school, take a Bitcoin class, go to Bitcoin University, Matthew Cratter. He's a great teacher, right? Go there, you know, listen to Robin's uh, interviews, listen to these guys, Grant Cordon, look at these people and take notes just like you do at school, just like you do at work. And again, work harder on yourself than you do any other job. So my main thing is, is not buying Bitcoin, but studying Bitcoin. If you're listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing, how to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet, on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in the middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague Conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in whole of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. Amazing. And you mentioned it, Satoshi, and uh, what you want to talk about. Um, still people right now think in Bitcoin terms and they're like, oh, how much is one Bitcoin? But how, how important is it that we start to think in Satoshi's? How, like, what, what, what's, uh, like what, what is also the, the motivation behind yourself to make a Satoshi's journal, not a, a, not a Bitcoin thing? Great question. It's so important, right? Because the first thing, when we look on TV, right, you look on TV and you look on Fox News, Fox Business, what do they say, say see, Robin? You see Bitcoin, 69,000, Bitcoin, 71,000, Bitcoin, 63,000. So what is a normal person going to say? I can't afford that. Who the heck, right? Who can afford that? So people don't know about Satoshis because they never talk about it in the mainstream. I think I want to say it's on purpose. I, I'm not I'm not going to go that far. Um, you know, but people can't afford it. Every time I talk to somebody about, hey, you know, when they ask me about my shirt or have you ever heard of Bitcoin? The first thing he says, oh, yeah, I can't afford that. I missed the boat. I heard about it when it was 10,000 or 5,000 or 3,000, but it's too much now. So my motivation to making Satoshi Saturdays, because I make one every Saturday, is I know that in the future, no one's going to be talking about Bitcoin. I think Satoshi is going to be the new Bitcoin. Because there's a hundred million Satoshis in every Bitcoin. So how I describe it to people, I say, look, you don't really have a dollar, right? You either got a hundred pennies, four quarters, 10 dimes, 20 nickels. It's all fractions. I go, right? I say, yeah, okay. I go, well, that's what a Bitcoin is. There is no such thing as a Bitcoin. And literally, there's, there, there's no such thing as a Bitcoin. We call it Bitcoin, but it's a bunch of Satoshis. So now... The number is big, 100 million Satoshis. That's like, oh, that's too big. I know it sounds big, but we're talking about 8 billion people, right? So when we talk about the 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis, because that's all that it will ever be, and you and I know that there's not going to be that many, right? Because some are lost and some people will never move them. And Satoshi's got, you know, 1.1 million or something like that, Bitcoin. So when I talk to people, I go, look, 
buy a dollar. One dollar today will get you this many Satoshis, 1,400 and something Satoshis today. And so I started that series fe February 10th, 2024. And the motivation behind that is, honestly, is for the documentation purposes that I talked about earlier. But I believe that in maybe 10 years or less or a little bit longer, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not sure. I don't have a crystal ball, but I believe that uh, we're going to be moving away from Bitcoin because once Bitcoin uh, gets to, uh, you know, in fiat terms, gets into millions and stuff like that. Once it hits a million dollars, I believe, first of all, I think that's just a layer that nobody can ignore it now. Nobody can. And I just want to have kind of like, um, like when the train, when the Bitcoin train is coming and like me and you are doing every day, we're laying down the tracks. And even though it may, may somebody may not look, look at our videos for maybe five, six years, I want to lay it down and say, wow, these Satoshis, are the way to go. So if they say, what about Bitcoin? What is Bitcoin? And the Satoshi start coming up and they start hearing Satoshi. Okay, Satoshi, what are that? The Satoshi Saturday will come up and they'll say, oh, what's this? Oh, 100, oh, let me write that down. 100 million Satoshis and one Bitcoin. Oh, I can spend $1 on Bitcoin because everybody has a unit bias. That's the reason why I used to buy crypto cur cryptocurrencies in the beginning. I'm like, oh man, Bitcoin, oh man, I'll, this Litecoin or this S coin or whatever, I can get, Buy it for 50 cents. And I, and I had a, a specific video about that. I said, unit bias does not exist with Bitcoin because, again, you can buy $1. You can buy $10. You can buy $20 and get Satoshis. And Satoshis are the are the ones, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is the thing that I always tell people when they – because I get this question asked a lot when I come to my – uh, normie friends uh, and they're talking like, oh, what's what's the next Bitcoin? I'm like, Satoshi. <laughs> that, that's, that's the next Bitcoin. Uh, and they're like, oh, what is Satoshi? What like What is the protocol? Like, And then I'm telling them, I'm like, they're like, oh, this sounds like Bitcoin. Yeah, but, uh, like what, what, 100 million Satoshis is one Bitcoin. And they're like, what? <laughs> You're fooling us? Uh, no, I'm not fooling. It, it, but it, it's in, it is interesting with the, the point you raised when um, Will, like why are not people talking about satoshis they're only talking about bitcoin i think just because people are not ready for it <laughs> i think uh, uh, if if cnn or like uh, C, like cnbc is, is the big thing in america i think we're, we're talking a lot about bitcoin also uh when they are all of a sudden talking only about satoshis and not bitcoin they probably would get calls from from listeners and they're like or why are you not covering Bitcoin? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but so the, the Bitcoin is right now a big thing. Uh, I'm curious to know, like, what price do you think has Bitcoin to reach that we actually shift to Satoshi? Because right now, I think a, a Satoshi is just not valuable enough on a euro dollar basis. So people are like tending more towards the Bitcoin thing and, and giving all the Bitcoin things out. Even... Uh, Bitcoin influencers, they are, when the price shoots up, nobody talks about the Satoshi price. Like nobody, a few always do, but most of them uh, post the Bitcoin price charts uh, and the euros and the dollar Bitcoin price charts and not the Satoshi one. Uh, I see it more and more that people actually do the Satoshi comparison. Uh, but is, do, you, do you think there's a price like 100,000 or a million or 10 millions where people just ignore Bitcoin and just, naturally tend towards uh uh satoshi because it's just more natural to do it yes that's a good question i think about that a lot but to go back to what you said about why, why don't they talk about satoshis on the news i think it's because like you said it's marketing right bitcoin is the name that's why i tell people when you're talking about these cryptocurrencies we have the network effect right network effect is so important and bitcoin's network effect i don't care if they came out with something even better than bitcoin which we know is, is impossible but let's just say an alien came down it can't catch up because of the network effect. so you got to use the word bitcoin because of the marketing but also that is a good question when do i think we will start talking about satoshis i think like i said earlier and you just said i think it's a million dollars to be honest. i think that's the global number because you know it's it's got so much you know, meaning and umph to it, you know, being a millionaire, how to be a millionaire. Is this guy a millionaire? Oh, this person, you know. So I think a million dollars uh, will pique the global interest because, you know, obviously the United States of America has the the United States dollar is the global reserve currency. And I'm, obviously I'm talking about the United States, 
a dollar price because everybody goes by that. When you when you look at the price, real quick, I'm gonna ask you a question. When you look at the price, do you look at what's it in your in euros first, or do you look at the U.S. dollar price first? Uh, I mean, right now I'm, I think it's like half a year or something like. I, I don't, I really don't look at the price. I only get to know about it when it comes up in my Twitter feed, uh, and then I see like the 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 euro uh, the dollar ones. Uh, I don't see a lot of euro charts. Uh, and if someone asks me, I always Google the, the US dollar to Bitcoin um, because for me, the US dollar is like uh, the the mother of all uh, fiat shit coins. Uh, and, and that's the, the, the one to look at. Like that's the that's the end boss. That's because what we're seeing now is like a lot of small fiat currencies get dissolved and will dissolve into the US dollars especially also with stable coins like this transition will go really quickly. We see it, Argentina has it on the plan. Uh, El Salvador already did it. They have uh, a US dollar standard with legal tender in in, in, in Bitcoin. Uh, and Brazil I had with, with a Brazilian guy who also writes a Cointelegraph uh, a podcast. He said also, uh, Brazilian has almost all of their reserves in US dollars and US pressures and US bonds and stuff like that. So. Uh, it's it's interesting that weak countries will first go in the US dollar. Uh, and even those who are aware, like El Salvador, they only have like 4% of their reserves in Bitcoin. And it 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 feels like a lot. They're like, oh, buying bit, one Bitcoin a day. But that's not that's nothing for El Salvador. Like, that's not a lot. Uh, I, I, I made this post because I was like, they are bearish. Like El Salvador is not bullish on Bitcoin. They 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 are not bullish enough. They they, they should buy so many more Bitcoins if they really may want to advance uh, in, into the future and want to make a bold move. Till now, it's more marketing than a bold move in my eyes. Yeah, is it still? Do they do one Bitcoin a day still? Yeah, they are still doing it. They have a public website where you can actually track. It it, it looks really good. Like when you because they are actually doing one Bitcoin a day. It's like since a year, this 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 up thing, I, I love it, but it's honestly more marketing. Uh, it's it's like I announcing, oh, I buy ten satoshis every day. Like, wow, <laughs> it's it's great, but uh, <laughs> but 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 El Salvador can do so much uh, so so much better, and it's 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 interesting when people are like, oh, El Salvador Bitcoin, yeah, but why are they not buying uh, buying more Bitcoin? Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, even though they're a small country, because, you know, in comparison to our country, they're small, it, they could do better. But back to the Satoshi thing and the million dollar Satoshi. I mean, I mean, think about it like this, Robin, right? Today, we can get 1,400 Satoshis, 1,400 plus Satoshis for $1, right? I know we don't like talking about the uh, the fiat, but if it goes up to $250,000 US dollar, we get 400 Satoshis for a dollar. If it goes to half a million, we get 200 Satoshis for a dollar. If it goes to a 1 million, our number, right? When we really start talking about Satoshis, you get 100 Satoshis for a dollar. That's still a steal. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I tell people that, and they're like, what are you talking about? Back in the bear market, and I made a video about this yesterday. Back in the bear market, 2022, 2023, I remember I had a goal. I was trying to get at least 100,000 uh, Satoshis every day, at least, right? And it was so cheap back then. It was, you know, 20 something bucks, sometimes 30 something because we were, you know, we we're ranging from the low 20s to the high, you know, to the low 30s and somewhere in between. And we got stuck in that range and we got a little bit uh, complacent. We got a little bit, you know, it was just, you know, the bear market it was just so long, but we didn't realize, you know, I was getting 3,000, 4,000 Satoshis for a dollar. I mean, if it crashed down today to that price. I would be selling everything I could to, to, to buy that, right? Why not do that now? Because it's all that, that those, how, how many Satoshis you can get for $1, it's all relative. And I said this in yesterday's video, or whenever you do this, my last Satoshi Saturday video, price is relevant and, and, and the Satoshis in the bear market is relevant. I believe being in the uh, low 60s, mid 60s, high 60s, low 70s is going to be uh, pennies and pennies and pennies on the dollars of what it's going to be in the future. So this is the bear market, but we're getting kind of lulled to sleep right now because we've been doing this for three plus months and it's just been in this little range. But when we're in the six figures, seven figures, million dollars, right? 
we're going to be looking back at this and people are going to say, I can't believe you got it for, you know, 1400 Satoshis for $1. I can't believe you bought under $100,000 Bitcoin and all this other stuff. So again, it's all about uh, relativity. And I tell people, just think about when Bitcoin is going to do what it's going to do and look at it today like it's the bear market. There is just nobody that ever said, oh, I wish I would have bought less Bitcoin. <laughs> I guess <laughs> I never heard that sentence. Uh, and this is kind of like where I always go like, um, if you can afford more, uh, buy more. And it's, it's like when we're talking about someone that already understands and believes in Bitcoin, he probably understands himself that he should get more involved and he's working more towards that uh, higher allocation. But for new people, uh, they should really get the education going. And I always say like, first buy some, then get educated and then figure out where your allocation is because your allocation is kind of also of a, a, a trust signal. And of course you have to consider like somebody has maybe his own company. Uh, he cannot sell his own company just because he wants to have more Bitcoin. Uh, maybe he has his own house. Then it's a good argument to just keep the house and, and have like, there's maybe emotional stuff involved. I still have a gold coin actually, uh, that was gifted to me from my father and has a symbolic emotional value for me. Uh, I would love to liquidate it, it for Bitcoin, honestly, but I would never do that because it has emotional value for me. Uh, so it's, it's, it's sometimes fair to have something else in Bitcoin. But in 99% of the cases, you should sell it for Bitcoin, <laughs> uh, which, which I never recommend because it's, uh, it's, it's your money and you should do whatever you want with your money. But uh, I uh, basically did that and I'm now, I, I was 120% in Bitcoin. Now I'm 104% in Bitcoin because I'm, I, I want to get off all the debts that I had. Uh, and I'm, I'm working towards like 95% allocation. That's like my, my, my golden era where I want to get to it. That's a good allocation. Anything in the high 90s, 100 or over 100, that's the best allocation. I say this in my video. I have two little sayings I say. Uh, for Satoshis, I say at the end of the video, I say stack Satoshis today. So you don't have to work for those same Satoshis tomorrow, right? Because one day well, you'll have to work for those, right? But in, during the week, during my re my regular videos, I always talk about uh, Bitcoin being the best way to save. And to me, the only way to save. And that's Bitcoin. It is the only way to save, right? So when I had my precious metals and I had a, a big allocation of my, my uh, net worth in precious metals, it was very encumbersome, you know, because it's stuck in one place. It's like a honey pot of all these physical metals in one spot. So when I went on vacation or left the house, even though I have a lot of good security here, I just didn't have that peace of mind. Right. And then when I really started getting down to the Bitcoin rabbit hole, because what do we do, Robin? We buy Bitcoin and we put it on a hot wallet. That's the first thing we do. And then the next step is, oh, let's get a cold storage. I bought a ledger. Right. <laughs> had a ledger. Then I had a Trezor. Trezor's a little better. Then, then all these things. Oh, Ledger's not Bitcoin only. Trezor's not Bitcoin only. Ledger has, you know, this and that. Don't use that. All that stuff that happened. So then I got a cold card, right? Then you got, you know, you got just Bitcoin and cold. Oh, I'm good. Then you're like, well, wait a minute. It's only one place. Got to do some multi-sig, right? And then you got to, you keep moving up and up and up. And when you're saving your money, it's like, I love Bitcoin because when I, when I, when I go travel somewhere, if something happened, Right. And I had to leave. I could liquidate all my furniture and everything and put it all into Satoshi's or Bitcoin. Put the words in my head and I can travel anywhere I want to. And and I tell people this all the time. Bitcoin and Satoshi's are everywhere and nowhere at the same time. So what better savings can you have than that? So when I tell people, you know, I, of course, I, I do. I do have cash for the very, very short term, you know, very, like if something happens, I'm not selling my Satoshis. I'm just not. So I like to have a little tiny bit of cash. I do have credit cards. I don't like to use them if I don't have to, but I will if it's, if it's the amount that's over my cash. I do like to have a tiny, tiny allocation to that. But other than that, I mean, like the great Michael Saylor says, there is no second best. And there were, there never will be probably. Um, that's really cool. And one topic I also want to get into with you, because you said you, you, you've done that uh, already with precious metal stackers and converted them to, to, to Bitcoin and, and stackers. 
how do you do that? Like, how, uh, what's the, the most common things that you have to go over with them? Uh, what are they not understanding about, about Bitcoin? Uh, is it the digital aspect that they don't, they don't trust anything that's digital? They think it's from the CIA? <laughs> Some do, yeah, or the NSA, yeah. Uh, precious metal stackers are, are very, uh, no offense, guys, okay? I know some of you guys are going to listen to this. They're very stubborn, and they come from the old school. They're usually older guys, older gentlemen. Uh, you know, some of them are younger in their 30s and stuff like that because they learn from their fathers and their grandfathers, and some of them got it passed down. And not only did they get the medals passed down, but they got the old ideals passed down too to them, right? Because if you don't, the 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 uh, the saying in in gold and silver and precious metals is if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Just like we have not your keys, not your bitcoins, or not your keys, not your cheese, right? So the biggest hurdle for them it's this is just fairy dust money, magical fairy dust money. It's not anything. You want to say something? Oh no 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 so sorry. Uh... Okay okay. And and it's like, you know, it's nothing. It's 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 made out of nothing. There's no intrinsic value because you brought up uh, Peter Schiff. Peter Schiff to me, um, I love Peter Schiff 99 percent of everything he says. Right. But obviously we know he's wrong about Bitcoin. And to this point, and I made so many videos on this guy to this point, I'm like, either this guy is the best marketer in the world and he just wants to be the villain of Bitcoin. Or he's just an idiot. And I know he's not an idiot, so I'm just like, what, what is this guy doing? Or, he's, or it could be he's stubborn, too. He's just so stubborn, but he's done a, such a disservice for so many precious metal stackers. You know what I mean? So I'm just like... Mm -hmm. what, what, what would you say to, to Peter Schiff? Like, uh, I mean, he has been in contact with so many Bitcoiners at this point. He has been, uh, kind of has this... A luxury situation to be in in-person interviews where they probably talk before and after the interviews off off the camera with really highly intelligent bitcoiners and really uh great people that orange build masses <laughs> why does he not, like as you said like it's, it's fascinating how you not see it but is there something that you're like i i would tell him this or th this he probably does not understand uh, or is it just like he's a marketer probably The first thing I would say to him, because obviously we're not supposed to ask people how much Bitcoin they have, but I would ask him, I'm like, Peter, listen, I'd pull him to the side and go, Peter, we know you got Bitcoin, man. How, how much you got, bro? You don't have to tell me the exact number, bro, how much. You, that's the first thing I'll say to him. And if he, you know, it depends on how you act to me. Oh, no, I don't have it. I'm like, Peter, come on, man. You know, you predicted the 08 crash. You know about sound money. You know about the Fed. You know about everything. You know Bitcoin is way better than gold and silver. So again, come on, man. Let, let's drop that. Your son has some. You know, <laughs> come on, man. Look at look at when you said he said it. And I think in um, I think it was Daniel Camboni's thing when he, he says uh, or or uh, the other girl. He says, "Oh yeah, I, I would have loved to keep Bitcoin, you know, but I, I missed out." But he knows about the havings. He knows about the supply issuance. He knows everything. I mean, he know it's not like he doesn't know it. People think he doesn't know. He knows more than probably a lot of new Bitcoiners does. So I'm, I would really ask him, like, what's your point here, man? What what are you doing? You know what I mean? Are you just marketing yourself because, you know, you're going to do this big, like you did with the April Fool's thing? Remember what he did when he came out and did all that stuff? I don't know. I don't know, man. But again, he, he's done a he's done a big disservice to a lot of people, even if he, uh, whether he's doing it on purpose or not, because there's still a lot of precious metal guys that just cannot get over All the talking points that he says, and the reason why I know that they listen to him, because when they tell me something, they're saying ex the exact same things that he says. Either they get it directly from him or those big gold and silver influences they listen to that got it from him. Right. So, again, I just think he's doing a big disservice. But the main thing about precious metal stackers, getting back to them, is I, they already know. Right. They already know that the system is broken. They know that the money system is just corrupt and everything. They know everything but they're using the wrong tool, right? So when I did it, I used to compare it to being like in an army. We're fighting against the Fed. So we're the Air Force. You guys are the ground force. And, you know, we need both, right? That's what I used to think. But then the more and more I got into it, I'm like, we, we only need Bitcoin and Satoshis. But again, I don't try to, you know, get them out. They have to learn and, and get go through that process. And again, it, it takes years to do it. But at first, you got to understand that there's a difference between the first thing I do is talk about the difference between crypto and Bitcoin. 
crypto is not Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin is not crypto. That's the first thing I say. Then I try to move them into Satoshi's, try to teach them about the digital money, how it's not a honeypot, how it is real, how it's not only just scarce, but it's finite. I show them the difference between uh, the supply issuance of, hey, this is how many Bitcoins are mined today. You know, it was 900 today in the Epoch 4. Now it's going down to 450 a day. And then this is how many every 10 minutes, 6.125 or 6.25 down to 3.125 every 10 minutes. Can I ask you a question? That's why I say to the precious metal stackers. How many gold ounces are out there right now? You may have a guess. You know, you could guess. How many gold ounces were mined today? How many is going to be mined tomorrow and the day after and the day after? They don't know, right? And I tell them, I say, look, not for nothing, technology is getting better. The only thing, the reason why gold is scarce is because our technology is not up to par yet. We have to, once we get up to the technology where when the price starts shooting up, because it has been going up a little bit, gold and silver, and congratulations to that, by the way. But when the price starts going up, what's going to happen, Robin? More people are going to say, hmm, we got to up this technology. We got to get our gold, right? When the demand goes up, when the when the price goes up, that means their, their technology is going to start going up and the supply uh, is going to start going up because they're going to find it in the sea. They're going to find it in different caverns. They'll go on the asteroid belt here in the next couple of decades. And that's the difference. You can't do any of those things with Satoshis and Bitcoin. You can't go undersea. You can't make any more of it. And I, when I explain that to them, they'll look at me sometimes. They go, okay, well, let me go to the silver shop and get me some silver now. I'm just like, oh, God. so it's tough. You know what I mean? But I've been, I've been breaking them down. I've been working on it. So I got a long ways to go. Yeah, and it's fascinating when you also look at people like uh, Frank Chustra and, and, and Peter Schiff, who are the, like bigger gold guys, they don't even have a lot of gold themselves. Like they, they probably say, oh, I own like five or 10% in, in gold, they are like gold stocks and, and other things. And it's like, okay, do you want to be in the camp where the the biggest gold guys have like 5% of, of, of the net worth in, in gold or do you want to be in camp where almost everyone in Bitcoin who's really a max, he has like plus 80% uh, or everything except their own company and their uh, own house in Bitcoin. They're like of the liquid, liquid net worth, they're 100% in there. Some, uh, some like uh, lunatics like me are over 100% in there. Uh, so it's like, in which camp do you want to, want to be just from that perspective but if you look at the fundamentals if you look at the facts then then it's also getting really soon really um obvious what you do and what what, what you what you should do yeah and that's what i say all the time i go look peter Schiff tells you to get five percent frank juster tells you to get five percent all these guys tell you to get five percent and the first thing i say is well, what do you do with the other 95 percent like you said the mining stocks okay okay get some mining stuff then what else do i do if gold and silver is that good, and I'm not saying it's bad, because people think I, you know, talk bad about it. So why do you always say 5%? Sometimes I'll say 10%. But with Bitcoin and, and Satoshis, again, I don't tell anybody how much to get. But once you go down that black hole and you start learning, you're going you're gonna to up your game and put in more. And again, there is no second best. So when I had my precious metals and my Bitcoin and I was going back and forth, all I know is as time went on, precious metals got less, Bitcoin got more. And again, they never say what's the other ninety five percent we should buy. They never tell us that. And and that's one legit reason uh, that I find to own precious metal. Uh, I don't do it because of that reason. I, I told you because I hold uh, the, the coin. But there's one legit use case that I find it reasonable when people come up to like that's the reason why I hold gold or I hold a little bit of silver, and that's for the. Same reason that you might want to have a little bit of food uh, in your house, uh, a little bit, a, a gun or something like that in your house, uh, like have something, a survival kit when the whole electrical system maybe breaks down for like a week or something. I, I don't have this. Uh, uh, I don't plan for this, uh, but it would make sense uh, if you have like a house at home uh, and you have like some room where there are some gold coins in there. There are like uh, talking about really small ones uh, where you can spend them and exchange them easily. Uh, you maybe have like canned food where you can eat for like a week or something like that. That that could make sense for me. And like if someone does that, it's it's like it's okay. But that should not be even five percent of your network. This should be like 
0.5% something like that. That's the only use case that I found. Maybe there's another one. Yes, yes. I, I do have that stuff, you know, a little bit of that. But this book right here, I bought this a couple of years ago, The Dark Secrets of SHTF Survival. This book shows you what actually happens during a SHTF. And the most important thing you need is that stuff you talked about, the food, the ammo, stuff like that. And in this book, I was looking for precious metals because a lot of these precious metal guys, they're doomsdayers, right? They're always ready for SHTF and stuff like that. And I tell people, I go, listen, I love precious metals. My favorite is constitutional silver. You know, the dimes, the quarters, the old stuff, uh, 1964 and, and, and before. And they think they're going to be trading back and forth gold and silver coins and all this other stuff. In this book right here, it'll tell you it doesn't mean it means nothing. Nobody cares about it. There's only a small percentage because everybody says, well, what if the power goes out? You, you know the thing. What if the power goes out? I go, if the power goes out, then, you know, you got your food. You need some cash because that's what's going to accept some cash. That's why I have a little bit of cash, too. And all the things that buy cash or bet cash buys with it, you know, the food, the, the, you know, the ammo and stuff like that. Nobody cares about gold and silver. First of all, even if they know about gold and silver, how are they going to know it's real? That, that's what I say to people all the time. So, again, I'm not, you know, trying to shit, excuse me, on uh, on precious metals, but you got to be a real, realistic, man, because the future's coming. And, um, again, you can see the evolution of money. You got the seashells. You got the salt. You got the precious metals here. Then you have the cash. Then you have the credit cards. And the final one, the final boss with the B is Bitcoin. I, I love it so much. Uh, and we're already over one hour. And I'm, 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 I have so many more topics that I want to go in with you. But uh, let's let's come to that uh, topic uh, for one of the last ones uh, before we end it today. Um, where do you see the near future of Bitcoin? Like, what do you expect uh, to come in the next, like, five years, ten years? Do you have, like, <laughs> any predictions even outside like outside of the, the price because the like, price is pretty impossible to predict uh other stuff is also hard to predict but do you have any predictions where uh, you see like that's or, or something that you are looking forward to that is exciting for you yes here in the united states i'm a i'm a i'm a patriot man i love my country so i'm going to talk about the united states first and i'll talk globally so the united states we're very uh spoiled here because we are the world reserve currency And I, I honestly think, and I know a lot of people don't like to talk about politics and stuff like that, but the choice is clear to me who, who we should vote for. Obviously, um, I'm voting for Donald Trump. Donald Trump, I believe he's not. I, I compare Donald Trump to Bitcoin in this aspect. First, first of all, they're both, they're both orange. You got the orange man and the orange coin, right? <laughs> right. That's number one. Number two, I believe they're both for freedom. I believe Donald Trump is the guy that is going to. Because, you know, America, no offense to anybody that's from another country, America is the world leader of freedom and just the world leader in so many different things. You know, not just the global uh, currency, but just uh, world reserve currency, just the, the trends and everything else. It's just, you know, you guys know. And so I believe Donald Trump um, voting him in within the next four years, obviously, and, and, you know, five years after that, whoever takes over for him. I believe I believe him when he says that uh, not only is he going to vote in or put on a libertarian in his cabinet, and I got a couple of people in the mind to do that for, but I think he's going to really understand that Bitcoin is the only way to fix the system. Now, Donald Trump did print a lot of money uh, during his tenure, especially during COVID. Um, and I, I don't you know, take that anything away from that. I know he did that. Uh, but Joe Biden did worse. And red or blue, it doesn't matter. They all print money. But I believe Donald Trump and his staff and his staffers, along with Vivek Ramaswamy, I don't think he's going to be his vice president, but I think he's going to definitely been a, a good advisor to him because I think all this stuff that Donald Trump is talking about right now, he got that from Vivek Ramaswamy. He got the original, you know, Bitcoin is, you know, I'm not going to measure Bitcoin and crypto. I'm not going to have a CBDC. And he said that. He said that Vivek Ramaswamy told me this. He's my guy. I want him to be president in 2028. But I believe uh, right now, uh, The United States has over, I think, 180,000 Bitcoin, I believe. I think we have the most. Either that, I've heard 180 to up to 210, but I think they might have sold a little bit. I think if Donald Trump was smart and he listens to his advisors and he sees what's going on with our uh, with our treasury and how much we owe and stuff like that, what I'm looking forward to the most in the next four or five years, I'm looking forward to him getting sucked into the black hole like we have. 
And once he learns more, he's going to realize like, oh, my God, that even though he wants to protect the U.S. dollar, he can't because it's inevitable. It'll die. It just will. And I believe he's going to look and say, you know what? We have this much Bitcoin. We want to be the, the leader of the world. We got to buy some more Bitcoin. The first country, and we know this, the first country to print money to buy Bitcoin wins. And I, and I hope, and this is a big hope, that we do that. And with Donald Trump, that's the only way we can. That's short term. Now, long term, that's for the United States. Now, long term, and then obviously more people, because of inflation in the United States, more people are going to start buying it. And as the price goes up, people are going to start discovering it and stuff like that and find our videos, right? But 10 years plus in the world, I believe uh, the poor second, uh, uh, third world country, second world, third world countries, I believe are going to be adopting Bitcoin because not because they want to or uh, they think it's good is because they have to. They have no choice. And there's countries that's doing that now. But I believe um, we are early, early, early in the adoption phase. But I believe uh, Bitcoin is going to not only change the world, but save the world. Fix the money, fix the world. We all know that. And I think and I believe that worldwide, worldwide, that Bitcoin will be the standard uh, in the next few decades, maybe 15, 20, 25 years or something like that. I believe it's, it's just going to be. I don't know when when it's going to happen, but that's my prediction, 15 to 25 years. Uh, and I believe the world, uh, third world countries that are just absolutely desolate and just losing all their purchasing power. And then these people sending money back and forth and with MoneyGram and Western Union and stuff like that, they can actually start saving in a digital money on a, on a little small phone. If you have the connection to the Internet, Anywhere in the world, you combine crypto cryptography and the internet together, and make the best uh, man, the best technology ever in Bitcoin, in my opinion. And uh, not only to uh, save people's lives, but save the future generations' lives. So that's what I'm looking forward to, man. I'm looking forward to the adoption of people learning about it, and people, more people like me and you, just sprouting out out of everywhere, and um, just changing the world together. No more wars and everything else. I love that so much. It's a uh, it's a great uh, great way to, to to say it and a great way to, to end the podcast. But before we come uh, to the end of the podcast, uh, we have the end routine uh, with the first question being, "What are you currently passionate about?" Which we did not cover in the podcast. And uh, besides Bitcoin, like what are you outside of what we <laughs> talked about and and outside of uh, Bitcoin passionate about or deeply learning about? And the background to that question is. Um, I think Bitcoiners are amazing people and they are deep thinkers and critical thinkers. Uh, and it's, uh, and this is the one question where I'm like trying to give, uh, a, a stage to all the great things Bitcoiners are doing so we can learn from each other. Yes. <clears throat> well, outside of Bitcoin, I had to think about that for a second. So I'm so passionate about Bitcoin, but as you, as you can see, I'm a, I'm a patriot and I love my country and I'm very passionate about uh, my country. I have here uh, the U.S. Constitution, um, Declaration of Independence. Uh, that's why when I read the white paper, it was like that email, that first email that came out reminded me of the Declaration of Independence and, um, and the Constitution, you know, with the, with the white paper. It's kind of like we declared our independence from the, 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 the monetary system. And I believe, uh, you know, Bitcoin is as American as American pie. But the thing that I'm so passionate about is uh, it, having people in America, combining patriots here in America, not only to wake up people from the lies and the, and the, and the propaganda and the mainstream media, the state, state organized media to wake them up from the lies, uh, but also to have them take a look at Bitcoin. So I have to, un have to know and understand that again, I know that we have the goggles on and I have the goggles on and I can't unsee what I see and I have to be patient to try to wake these people up because they're not going to see what I see all the time. So I'm very, very passionate about my country, my freedom, Jerry loves freedom and um, the tyranny here in the, in the world and in our, in our country. I'm very, very passionate about the United States and I want Donald Trump to win the, uh, win the election and take our country back. Yeah, I think, I mean, from an outside perspective, I think he has great chances to uh, I think he's uh, I mean, if <laughs> that, uh, one guy got that a question 
uh, in, in my podcast, uh, who, who, do, who does he think that wins the US election? He was like, and he said, like, if Donald Trump gets to the election, he will be voted in. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so I, I also think uh, that he has the, he, he probably will be president of the United States again uh, in, what is it, November, December? Yes. And one more thing about Donald Trump that I forgot to say is that another reason I compare him to Bitcoin, obviously it's the orange thing, but also when people call, because Bitcoin is technically a cryptocurrency and Donald Trump is technically a politician. Bitcoin is not crypto and Donald Trump is not a politician. You know, he's a, he's a multi-billionaire. Yes, he became the president, he became technically a, a politician, but just like Bitcoin, they got so many similarities. They want freedom. You know, they're both orange. They're not politicians. They're not cryptocurrencies. And I believe both of them can change the world. Amazing. Then we come to our last end routine where the previous guest is asking a question uh, for the next guest uh, without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, and the question for you is, what are you planning to do to level up in the Bitcoin community? Just being consistent. Uh, I have to start with me and I have to keep reading books every day. Uh, learning, listen to the podcast and uh, making videos every single day and trying to not only uh, learn from the podcast and the books I read, but read my comments under my videos because there's always wisdom in the crowd uh, and just getting out here and talk to as many people as I can and stay consistently uh, making videos every day. Perfect. And uh, uh, thank, uh, before I let you go, Jerry, where can people find you? Where can people find your YouTube channel, your contact information? Where can people ask you questions? I just, I make YouTube videos. I have a Noster. Um, I just got on there a couple of months ago, but my main thing is YouTube. I have a Twitter account, but I just put my YouTube videos on there. So yeah, you know, just if you type in Jerry Loves Freedom on YouTube, you can find me. Perfect. And thank you, Jerry, for, for being on and for everyone watching. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode and yeah, bye bye.